ask Miss Summer if she would make her way. It's been wonderful to hear the testimonies of living missionaries now, but it's also been very helpful for us to be introduced to missionaries and men and women who have made a phenomenal impact for the Lord in time past. I want you to listen very closely to the testimony of one by the name of Lilius Trotter. The first step into the realm of giving is not manward, but Godward an utter yielding of our best. So long as our idea of surrender is limited to the renouncing of unlawful things, we have never grasped surrender's true meaning. For no polluted thing can be offered. In 1853 in London, during the golden age of Queen Victoria, I was born into a wealthy family. My parents considered the value of walking be humbly before God to be of first importance. And although my ability to receive spiritual truth increased as I matured, it wasn't till my sister and I encountered the American evangelist D.L. Moody at the Royal Opera House Revival Meeting that my spirit was quickened, made alive by God's Holy Spirit. Here I personally accepted Christ by faith as my savior. The music was led by Iris Sankey and my sister and I joined the choir. During this four month long gospel mission, my understanding of Christian faith and practice was clarified and strengthened. God used this Moody Sankey meeting to give me a desire to bring a divine compassion to others the hope of salvation, I volunteered with the Young Women's Christian Association, an organization Moody supported, and sought to reach the street girls at Victoria Station for Christ. In addition to my love for sharing the gospel, I possessed a passion for art, born of an innate sensitivity to beauty. To be a world-famous artist or follow Christ that was a question put to me by John Ruskin. Ruskin was a renowned artist and art critic that no man could lightly turn down. He was all that was important in Victorian society. His say mattered on everything from nature to architecture. While visiting Venice, my mother initiated a meeting with him to view my art. And afterwards, he decided to take me under his tutelage. Now he offered me importance, respectability, and security. But with this came a choice of whether God or art would be my master. On the one hand, the world and fame. On the other, obscurity and God. I believed it was not enough to give God the bad things in my life. He was worthy of my all. And so I relinquished a prestigious career in art and went to the North African country of Algeria to reach those lost in the heart of Muslim darkness. Because of a surgery that left my heart weak, I have been rejected by two missions agencies. Undeterred, I was 35 when two friends and I landed in North Africa. None of us would have been passed by a doctor for any missionary society. We did not know a soul in the place or a sentence of Arabic, nor had we a clue as how to begin work on such untouched ground. We only knew we had to come. If God needed weakness, he had it. We immediately began studying Arabic, intending to share the gospel as widely as we could for as long as we could. For 40 years, I depended solely on the divine resources of the Holy Spirit. We wrote tracts in colloquial Arabic, the everyday language of the people, and illustrated them in Eastern style. We showed the love of Christ by teaching a trade to Muslim women who were rejected by their husbands for younger brides. And towards the end of my life, I became fascinated with the Sufis, a group of Muslims who craved unity with God. I believed God was preparing a way for them 
to understand the gospel. I told them that faith in Christ was a first step on the path to unity with God and taught them the seven I am statements of Jesus from John's gospel. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I'm the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth and the life. I am the vine. I sought to live the gospel of union with God through faith in Jesus Christ, to bear his name with all that is wrapped up in it, of fragrance and healing and power, to enter into his eternal purpose is a calling for which it is well worth counting all things as loss. I never became famous, nor did I see thousands of souls saved, but I learned to persevere in prayer for the Muslims and to love them as Christ is, to measure my life by loss and not by gain, not by the wine drunk, but by the wine poured forth. For love's strength standeth in love's sacrifice, and he who suffers most has most to give. So then turn your eyes upon him, look full into his face, and you will find that the things of earth will acquire a strange new dimness. Will you turn full your soul's vision to Jesus and look at him? Let the divine lay hold of you, for he is worthy to have all there is to be had in the heart that he has died to win.